everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. I am dreaming with Robert Moss, who is the author of a book, Dr Growing Big Dreams, Manifesting Your Heart's Desire Through 12 Secrets of the Imagination. He will be coming to eastwestbookshop.com on February 26th between 6 and 7.30. We've been having just a wonderful time talking, and um, I wanted to talk about um, synchronizing your life with this, just the greater universe and all that's happening. And you were telling me about a wonderful story that you wanted to share about synchronicity. So please do tell. Well, I'd really like to tell this. I told it last time I was in person live at East West. I will not be telling it on Friday or Saturday. I've told it already, but I need to tell it again. It also takes me back to the time of air travel. Remember that? Oh, yes. <laughs> The bardo of air travel. I used to travel yeah. on planes all the time. I've been on one for a year. So a couple of, and it's also an example of spiritual magnetism or spiritual gravitation. You know, we're carrying some energy with us. The world is drawn or to it or repelled by it. And this goes beyond our personal energy field. It goes to the play of the archetypes, the gods, the goddesses, the larger powers. In this case, uh, the archetype of death, maybe. So I'd been leading a workshop, a creative writing workshop at Bosswood Hollow near Seattle, where I love to uh, to do things. And I'm flying home now. And in that workshop, I'd been playing a game as I tried to deliver some writing drafts myself for the would-be writers around me. I was playing the game of Scheherazade, the Arabian Nights, remember? She's a girl who has to come up with a new story every night or else she'll be killed. Mm. She has to come up with a new story every night. So I'm imagining a writer who's made a deal with his death. But he has to keep coming up with new stories or else he's he's out. And I'm trying to write within that frame. That's the background. OK, put all that on one side. I'm on the airplane. What's going to happen on the airplane? Well, along the aisle comes a very tall woman, her height exaggerated by the high heels on her black leather boots, who is dressed entirely in black leather with a top hat, top hat on top of her head. <laughs> she looks and I noticed something funny about her gloves, but I can't quite make it out. She sits next to me, of course, and a yeah. small companion male sits next to the window. And I look at her gloves, and her gloves has death's heads on the back. Oh, and my goodness. She, and she's sitting next to me on the plane, and I'm sort of looking. I'm not sure. I usually talk to strangers on planes because they're going to be a source of stories, right? And this is what right. I like. But I don't start the conversation. She looks around, stiffs, looks at me and says, hmm, I like this flight. And I look at her, she says, yes, uh, all the seats are full. You know, actuarially, if the plane is going to crash, there will be 20% of the seats empty. This is how the conversation begins. <laughs> then she says, knowing nothing about me, do you think that the dead talk to us in our dreams? I say, absolutely. Oh, good, she says. My husband was a rock musician. He was shot in the face in a diner in Seattle last year and killed. It was in the newspapers. And last night he was by my bed talking to me. What do you think of that? I said, it's a good story, she says. <laughs> he told me he's doing music and special effects for the dreams that people are going to see in the night. What do you think of that? I said, that's really wonderful. I think that's possible. Yes, marvelous. So the conversation grows. It, <laughs> it turns out that her profession is dominatrix. At this point, I'm tempted to fall completely silent. What do you say to a professional dominatrix who is talking to you about death? She wants creme de menthe. They don't have it on the plane, so she has a triple vodka, and the conversation is gusting and going on. And then she says, um, Jezebel, I'd love to read a story about Jezebel. I'm trying to remember Jezebel from the Bible. Of course, she's a pagan princess who becomes a queen of Judea. Uh, and she says, yes, yes, Jezebel, a Phoenician witch, she says to me, those Phoenician witches were so good with dreams. And what she doesn't know and what I haven't told you is one of the stories I started writing, the writing retreat, was about a Roman centurion whose girlfriend was a Phoenician witch, witch who studied dreams. She doesn't know that. As if her dead husband or someone is beside her. Psst, psst, try this one on him. And very quickly to the end, she says, you know, I love crows and ravens. Of course you do, I say. Of course you do. She says, do you know there's a collective noun, a group of crows or ravens? I'm very proud. Yes. A collective um, what? Co collective noun. A noun. Oh, oh yes. A word to describe a group of crows or ravens. Do you know what it is? I say, yes, it's a murder of crows. It's an unkindness of ravens. Everybody knows that, she says. There's another word. It applies to both. 
it is a storytelling of crows or a storytelling of ravens. Her eyes are black and fierce as she looks at, do you know why? I say, I bet you're going to tell me. Oh, I saw this one, she said. There's a storytelling of crows, a gathering of crows, and there's a crow who's telling a story to the others and they're listening. And then they peck him to death because he was an unsatisfactory storyteller. What do you think of that? It's a marvelous story. <laughs> so it's all playing out on the plane. I put it in another of my books. I, I don't think it's in Growing Big Dreams. But I told the story at East West last time as an example of how we are magnetic in different ways. I guess because I love stories, I tend to attract stories. And I guess because that was my theme that day and that week, something came into play. Mr. Jung, who gave us the word synchronicity, said that we go through life in a with a uh, with, with a with a with a personal atmosphere a circumambient atmosphere around us beyond the personal energy field he's talking about the fact that we're connected to greater stories to gods goddesses archetypes and that becomes part of what is drawn to us or repelled from us too i was playing with death that week in my workshop death played with me in the body of the dominatrix with the death's head gloves and the top hat on the plane. Did I pick uh, up a message? Did I pick up? Yes, I picked up more than a message. I picked up the story because I wrote that story in two forms in my books. So what does this say to anybody? What does it say to you? Well, we are magnetic. You are magnetic. You know, you know that your thoughts, your actions, your connections, they're in play all the time. They generate what's going to happen around the next corner. They generate your interaction, your success or failure with other people. They generate your experience of the world because whatever you think or feel strongly, the world is going to say yes. So pay attention to what you're thinking or feeling strongly. You're thinking or feeling strongly that death is watching you and you better come up with a new story. Be prepared for what you will get. <laughs> well, were you just pressured to like, okay, now... I, I've got to write stories and they, you know, or I'm going to have my eyes pecked out by this crow group. I, I, well, I journal, I journal every day. That's one way that I deliver stories in my own book of uh, dreams and visions and so on. Uh, I do recognize that I have to have a new story I can deliver in some way or other every day. I mean, Scheherazade in the Arabian Nights isn't writing them down. She's telling them. She's telling them so well. She holds the attention of the misogynist tyrant king who would otherwise kill her. I mean, that's pressure. That is pressure, and she is delivering. But I really do believe that this, I mean, I, I believe each of us is living a bigger story. It might be the wrong story. We're living a, a small story, living a family story, a family history, which might be right or wrong. But I believe beyond that, we are all living in the world of the myths, the folk tales, the fairy stories, maybe several of them at once, maybe they're clashing and contending, and maybe it's the right story, maybe it's the wrong story. For me personally, I thought it was the story of Odysseus for a long time, the wounded warrior who's eventually healed in the realm of women and washed up and shipwrecked and still has a very hard time getting home. I thought that was my story. I actually think that my story is Scheherazade, somebody who's Aww. called to come up with new stories every day. I like the fact that I can identify with a woman who's under that pressure. So I think for me, that is one of the biggest stories I'm living. And frankly, even though it produces shiverish experiences like the death's head dominatrix on the <laughs> It's fun. It's fun. I love it. When you said that that is your destiny, my watch just like what was buzzing for some unknown reason. Yeah. So I love how, again, synchronicity, all the symbols, the signals, the things that you are inexplicable, the chills that, you know, I've been getting throughout this whole conversation these are these are things outside or within us that are beckoning us to listen and to notice and i love that story all right i'm going to try to squeeze in one more segment to talk about the different kinds of dreams that we have um we have been talking to robert moss what a delightful interview um from my perspective, hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. Okay, um, we are talking about growing big dreams, manifesting your heart's desire through 12 secrets of imagination. Thank you so much. Thank you.